Okay. What of the other activities can be used, uh, practice in the sustainable agriculture is the zero burning. Just give examples such as countries such as in Malaysia where we are one of the main producers of the oil palm. And we planted thousands of hectares of land with oil palm. The oil palm have the production rates for 20 years. So what will happen after 20 years? So we have to replant it, it again. So what will happen with all the trunks of these oil palms? We cannot burn it. So because this is the rule for the sustainable oil palm production in the world. So we cannot burn all these crop residues. So what the uh, agriculture's plantation practices is, you have to cut the oil, the oil palm trunk into slices, small pieces, and these small pieces can be used back as a mulching in the oil palm. And it is, uh, the studies show that those all um, mulching for the oil palm trunk can uh, reduce 50% of the fertilizer's cost for the uh, first few years. Yeah? And for the, of course, we cannot use all trunk to become as a mulching in the farm because there's a huge amount of it. Yeah? So what they also have produced where this uh, trunk has been processed into the other products. Yeah, they can process this into the papers, fertilizers, all other material uh, for more environmental friendly. Okay, and this is just to show there's no burning. Yeah, of course we don't burn in this country. Uh, in Malaysia, we don't burn rubber, especially, and the rubber tree is very precious because not only it gives us latex. But at the same time, the trunk itself is more valuable than latex because it can produce furniture. Yeah? And no doubt, in any farm, we always have a problem with the pest management. We have to control pests in the farm to ensure that we can get a high produce and good produce. This is where our money comes from. Okay? So the first pass that we talk about is to use uh, to control weed, and again this weed we can uh, control by cover crops and mulching. As you can see before, cover crop and mulching we can cover. We uh, have to cover the land area, open area. So therefore, don't give any chance for the weeds to grow, and minimum tillage. Why minimum tillage? Because whenever the tillage process happens, there's some dormant seed on the ground will be bring out. So at that time, this seed uh, will, uh, will get a good conditions to emerge. So a new seed will come in. So minimize the tillage. And the next one, we can introduce uh, cattle in the plantation to feed in the wheat, uh, to feed on wheat this is been practices in the uh, in the farm like such as oil palm plantation in Malaysia and it we found out that the wheat the conduct wheat control is the highest cost in the oil palm plantations and it was found that by introducing cattle in the farm, it gave the very good control of the wheat. At the same time, the feces from the, oil, uh, from the cattle can be used as a bio-fertilizer in the farm. Okay. The next one is the insect pest. How we want to control insect? Yeah, use biological control. So what? To increase the biological control, we can produce higher, uh, we have to plant many types of plants in the area. We can introduce it such as crop barrier, nectarious shrubs. What is a nectarious plant? Uh, shrubs is a plant that have flowers yeah, that attracts insects. 
when there is other insects beneficial insect come to your farm they easily can control the become the natural enemy to the pests in the farm and you can also follow the intercropping and crop rotation basically with the intercropping crop rotation crop barrier and nativarious shrubs this is activities to increase the diversities of the plant in the farm therefore will increase many insects in the farm for the uh, natural control and then this is to show you the uh, numbers of the uh, organism can be used uh, as a biological control if you see any ladybirds in your farm don't kill it ladybird basically is just a good friends of the farm for the farmers it will kill the other insect and frogs and if you have a dragonflies uh, this is all the beneficial insect yeah disease management okay disease is hard to control when you want anybody want to control disease you have to start it from the seed before we even planted the crop again hence sure that we have to make sure that the seed that we purchase are free from any uh, disease or um, antagonist uh, pathogen or any pathogen yeah therefore how you want to you have to buy a certified seeds yeah and also make sure to buy a resistant cultivar that's cultivars that can resist the disease and also before planted do some uh, the seed have to be clean and put some uh, pesticide to cover it yeah or usually the practice is a put fungicide and finally in the sustainable agriculture yeah this encompass all the activities in the economic system the most important thing we use the integrated pest management practices integrated pest management is an ecological approach that significantly reduce eh, or eliminate the use of pesticide doesn't mean we can't use pesticide yes we can but only as a last resort okay and if we cannot use the pesticide how we want to control pests in our farm using the ipm methods of course we use the natural predator parasite uh, this is biological control we plant the the one thing i haven't mentioned is the uh, repellent plants yeah we can introduce repellent plants some things like uh, uh, citronella yeah in a fire can uh, plant a citronella or some other uh, like you know plants that give the odor that can repel the insect yeah and also you use a pest resistant variety as i mentioned before for the seed yeah choose a, a clean seed and also resistant seed cultural practices these cultural practices included crop rotation cover crop minimum tillage yeah? and also others as a physical techniques maybe if just the populations of the pest is just still low you can use the human hand control such a weed you can just uh, pick it up yeah okay and this is to show you where the methods activities in the integrated pest management where they have the uh, from starting from the soil preparation planting uh, the forecasting why you need forecasting this is to ensure uh, for the to forecast if the pest population is going to be increased or not it is uh, related with the pest trapping or pest moni uh, population monitoring and then it come this pest population monitoring will for give us the economic threshold levels of each insect and when you uh, when each it reach the threshold level then we can uh, say okay we have to use pesticide as a last resort in controlling pests in the farm so uh, 
uh, that is all I said uh, about the sustainable agriculture. I just want to summarize back. In sustainable agriculture, we have three main goals. There's an economic development. We will have a social political development. And the third one is for the ecosystem dynamics. And the ecosystem dynamics, we have a four system that have to, uh, in four ecosystem in the farm, they have to keep it intact. So that is all. Thank you very much.